I'm a seamstress and I have a baby and I live in North America and therefore I must become that mom who makes all her kids Halloween costumes. But since my kid is only like 16 months old and doesn't understand what Halloween is and has never even had candy, that means I get to dress her up however I want. And since it is 2020, the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment, and since voting rights is like my thing, I'm totally going to dress my baby up as a suffragette. Fun fact, people who fought for the right to vote were generally called suffragists. But in the UK, some dudes thought it would be insulting to call women suffragists suffragettes. But the women embraced the term, and now every time you hear the word suffragette, you instinctively sing that one song from Mary Poppins. Now, if you came here because you want a quick and dirty DIY costume for your baby, this may not be the video for you. Because I'm a hobbyist historical costumer, so I'm going to be super extra and apply what I know about historical fashion to this baby costume. But you might get some good ideas, and if you want a few no-so ideas for accessories, you can go to this time for making the hat, and this for making the classic Votes for Women sash. But before we get started, I know we're all getting a lot better these days about acknowledging the struggles of suffragists of color and how black indigenous people and others were often denied suffrage until well after the passage of the 19th Amendment. But you know what else we need to talk about? How barriers to voting and the diluting of voting power continues today, often in ways that are less overtly racist but instead take on the form of more sinister strategies like gerrymandering, non-compliance with the Motor Voter Act, restrictive voter ID laws, an incomplete count of the census, underfunding county elections offices at the state level, long lines at the polls, limiting polling sites and times at college campuses, partisan attempts to limit polling options, state laws that limit early voting, purging voter rolls of non-citizens who are, in fact, citizens, and enacting mail-in voting restrictions two weeks before voting begins. But if you're still with me, let's start with the dress. I'm going for a general Edwardian look of a frilly white shirt plus long skirt, but I'll be sewing the two together so technically it's a dress. I have a bunch of small scraps of lace I can use along with this scrap panel left over from my last project. Might as well use it. I also have a ton of white muslin. For the skirt, the only real bottom weight fabric I have that would be suitable is this army green cotton twill. I figure it can be kind of a sporty walking skirt style. Not that literally anyone else but me and you watching at home will recognize the intricate details of turn of the century fashions, but whatever. <laughs> I'm going to hack this pattern because it is the only baby pattern I own which has these important features. One, a high neck. Two, a back opening. Three, long sleeves, although these are three quarter sleeves, but I will make them full length. And four, it is designed for woven fabrics, not knits. After taking a bunch of measurements on my baby, I compared those to the actual pattern piece measurements. Because if you have a kid, you know that sizing for kids can be all over the place. And this pattern is only sized by weight and height. By that measurement, my baby should be a large, but comparing pattern pieces with her body measurements, I'll be using a medium. I'm tracing the front and back pieces and hacking them from there. I want to make a curved neck yoke, and I have just enough of this lace trim to fit. So I'll need to draw that line and split the pattern. I know that this pattern's bodice is a little short because I made it before, so I lengthened it. And I wanted to add that leftover tucked panel to the middle, so I need to split the front in two. At the last minute, off camera, I remembered I wanted to gather the front bodice at the waist, you know, to recreate that classic pigeon front and Wardian look. So I split the pattern piece and swung the side outward to give it more room at the waist. For the skirt, I'm doing multiple panels based on measurements and some math. I'm going to do a slight trumpet shape, so I'm swinging out the seam lines at the hem. The nice thing about sewing for little kids is the pieces are all small, so cutting and sewing doesn't take very long. For the sleeve, I'm just cutting a slightly wider and longer piece so the sleeves will be gathered at the shoulder and run the full length of her arm. Okay, here are my cutout pieces. So I've got my front pieces, so I have two sides, a center panel that I cut out from that leftover piece, 
that I think I'm going to edge with leftover uh, lace. I've got my little yoke pieces and I have just enough left of this edge lace to maybe work around the yoke. I've got back pieces, I've got a back yoke and the back. That's just gonna be a lot simpler. It will also have the lace around the yoke. And then lastly, I have skirt panels. So I'm doing six skirt panels, three in the front, three in the back, and I made the back pieces a little bit wider because I'm going to add elastic to the back waist so it's easier for her to put it on over her head. And then the back will have uh, a center back opening and I'm probably just gonna put Velcro in it because it's a costume, so why not? So now I'm just gonna take a minute and clean up a little bit because you should always clean up as you go. And then I'm gonna sew up as much as I can before this baby wakes up from her nap. I'm adding more lace to either side of the center front panel. Now on a real adult size Edwardian shirt waist, a woman would wear lots of white layers underneath her shirt. So the see-through lace insertion wouldn't reveal bare skin underneath. But that's not the case for a baby, so I cut a lining layer to sit behind that front panel. This also helps if I need to layer a shirt under the dress for warmth. Since I want to attach this straight lace trim to a curved yoke seam, I need to gather it a little bit to account for the curve. I'm just sewing one line of basting stitches and I don't even have to pull the threads. It just kind of naturally gathers up on its own, which is perfect. The yoke then gets attached to the bodice, which is always difficult because you're trying to connect two opposite curves. The trick is remembering that your stitching lines have to match up, not your raw edges. Now since this is a Halloween costume, I'm not going to be super perfectionist about stuff like accidental puckers in this yoke seam, since it's just going to get covered up by the lace trim. Next, I'm adding a little bit of extra lace around the neckline, and then sandwiching that between the lining layer of the yoke. These seam allowances get clipped so I can easily roll the yoke lining to the underside. Most big four baby patterns have the same 5 8 inch seam allowances that adult patterns do, which I think is way too much for a garment this small, but whatever. The yoke is finished and I have the little lace edging. On the inside, I have the yoke lining. And on a normal garment, I would like tuck this raw edge under and like hand stitch it down, but. This is a costume for a baby who's going to wear it one day, so we're not going to worry about all that. <laughs> After that comes gathering the sleeves. When a garment is this small, it is way easier to sew in the sleeve before sewing up the side seam. I mean, it's way easier to do that on a normal size adult garment too, but that method doesn't work for every design. And through the magic of editing, the sleeve and side seams are pinned and sewn. The skirt is super simple. I just sewed up all the panels together. And this is an absolutely legitimate professional technique of scratching your fabric so it lays flat. Before I can attach the skirt to the bodice, I have to finish the bodice closure. I hemmed the center back and trimmed some Velcro to fit. This is so in Velcro because the sticky back stuff really doesn't work well with clothes. After gathering the front waist to fit the front of the skirt, I stuffed the whole bodice into the skirt and sewed the waist seam.
All right, the dress is almost complete. I still have to do hems and I have to add the elastic to the waistband in the back. But I wanted to try it on the baby first just to make sure everything was okay. It's a little bit short, but that's probably a good thing for a baby because you don't want her stepping on the skirt. So I may do a very narrow hem or do some kind of like hem tape. The sleeves are also almost too short. So again, narrow hem. The only other problem I have is even though I made the lace gathered around the yoke, it still wants to kind of pop up, especially in the front. So what I might do is just hand tack with some thread the lace down in a couple places around the yoke just to make sure it's not floppy. But other than that, like it actually looks pretty good. It seems really big, but then I have to remember that she's a lot taller than I think she is. And um, the skirt is also much wider than it will be because I still have to put in the elastic. So I'm gonna do that next and then do the hems. I'm using the back waist seam allowance to make a casing to hold the elastic. So first I sewed each end of the elastic to the seam allowances at the side seams. Then I stretched the elastic as I sewed the edge of the seam allowance to the back bodice. Should I have sewn this casing first and then threaded the elastic through? Probably, but this way is faster. Assuming you don't accidentally sew over the edge of the elastic halfway down the casing, which I totally did. Oops. There's really no trick to doing these little hems. They're tiny, they're fiddly, you just gotta get them under the presser foot. For the skirt hem, I sewed twill tape very close to the raw edge of the skirt. Then folded it under and sewed it down. Now, if I had done this by hand, I could have manipulated the twill tape to lay against the fabric much better. But again, this is a Halloween costume and it doesn't really matter what the insides look like. While I was sewing, baby got a hold of the twill tape. What did you do? What did you do? So I ordered a cheap kid sized straw boater hat on eBay and it was too big because they don't really make baby sized straw hats. Luckily, it was easy to take the straw braid apart and a little less easy to sew it back up again. Not gonna lie, I redid this hat twice because the first time I sewed it, which is the footage you're seeing now, the crown was still too big. That's because the hardest part about sewing this is curving the straw down from the top of the crown to the sides and then curving it back out again for the brim. I had trouble getting those sides straight the hat really wanted to become more bowl shaped. Luckily, a good pressing helped. Next, I added some elastic to the inside of the hat to help keep it on her head. Now, I am fully aware that she is a baby and is naturally disinclined to wear hats. So if she ends up tossing this thing immediately, I won't be too upset. At least I've learned how to sew my own straw hat and now I want to make all the hats. I also replaced the strip of fabric that goes along the edge inside the crown so the straw won't scratch her cute, tiny little baby head. I did this by hand because there is no way I can fit this hat back under my machine. Now for decoration and a little note on color schemes. In the US, suffragists often used purple, white, and gold to advertise their cause. In the UK, it was purple, white, and green. I've heard it means give women the boat. Anyway, we're in the US, so we're going with gold. These ribbons I'm also using for the sash later on, but I'm just wrapping them around the crown of the hat and adding a dab or two of hot glue to keep them in place. It's not super pretty, but don't worry. This wonky front section is gonna get covered up later. I folded the ribbons together to make a fancy little flower medallion thing. And then I quickly sewed a few stitches by hand and hot glued it to the hat.
For the sash, I'm using the same satin ribbons. I'm going to attach the colored ribbon to the white with some stitch witchery, which is basically a roll of fabric adhesive. I'm wrapping the gold ribbon around one edge of the white ribbon and gluing it down on both sides. You could also sew this, but I didn't have matching thread for the purple or gold. I also cut my ribbons extra long so I can trim them down later to fit the baby. My sash is now ready for my lettering. My sister-in-law very kindly printed this for me on her silhouette machine. So this is like vinyl that you iron on. And I tried on the sash onto the baby before I started and pinned where I needed to start and stop the letters so I know where to place it. And this is the first time I've ever done iron on anything. So I hope this is going to work. I'm layering over a piece of silk organza for safety. This polyester ribbon probably can't take a lot of heat, so I need to be careful and patient. silly little costume which altogether didn't take me too many hours to make and would have taken even less time if I wasn't so detail oriented about a costume for a baby. Also bear with me as I try to chase this kid around the yard to get pictures of this dress. And just as I suspected she did not appreciate the hat. But that's okay, the sash is still cute. I added a little snap to the part of the sash where it overlaps at the hip. In a pinch you could use a safety pin. I also tacked the sash to the dress at the shoulder. If you don't, this thing will totally just slide off their little bodies, make them trip, and then they'll cry, and then it'll be awful. Just sew or safety pin it in place. And I accessorized her outfit with some cute reproduction suffragist pins that a friend gave me. It doesn't get very cold in Texas. In fact, it's in the 80s while I film this, so she's not wearing any extra underlayers. But if it does get cold, she can wear leggings and a onesie under the dress. Since we're still in the midst of COVID, we'll probably only get together with family for this Halloween, which is okay because again, she's a toddler, she doesn't understand trick-or-treating, and she needs to be in bed by 7.30 anyway. But I hope that in 18 years, she'll look back fondly on these pictures of this costume and wonder to herself, am I registered to vote? Is it too hot out? Do you want to go back inside? <laughs> <laughs>